Okay, good to go. Good, uh, good afternoon. That's the penultimate session of the day in the conference um, before we go to the, to the beautiful dinner tonight. So, uh, hot topic, um, DCB in bifurcations. Um, I have the pleasure to be uh, together with uh, an amazing uh, um, uh, group of chairs, co-chairs and panelists. So we have uh, Bernard, of course, we have Dr. Pulovic, we have uh, Rathor, Dr. Rathor online, stood here, hello, how are you doing? And then we have uh, on the panel as well, as you can see here, great um, people from all around the globe. Um, I'm sure we're gonna have some good discussion here on uh, this hot topic. Let's start with the first um, topic of the day, the first talk of the day, drug-coated balloons for CAD, Third report of the International DCB Consensus Group by Dr. Schiller. Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Bruno Schiller from Saarland University in Germany. Um, it's a great honor for me to be invited to the uh, EBC 2021 uh, Bifurcation Club meeting. My talk is about structural balloons uh, for coronary artery disease. Um, why is there a need for alternative treatments to current generation drug looting stents? Because we know that there is a stent related uh, yearly event rate of up to 4%. And according to current knowledge, this event rate, uh, increasing event rate does uh, never stop. This meta analysis <clears throat> compares the um, clinical outcomes uh, in the randomized trials comparing DCB for coronary artery disease with alternative treatment. And as you can see, uh, within the first year, there's a reduced rate of myocardial infarction when using a DCB only. Um, and after three years, um, there is a lower uh, all-cost mortality after DCB use, um, especially driven by cardiac mortality at three years. To date, the European guidelines um, have only a recommendation for the treatment of um, coronary instant resinus for DCB. This recommendation is supported by a large number of randomized clinical trials comparing DCB and DCS for ISR treatment. And as you can see, uh, overall, there's a somewhat higher TLR rate uh, after DCB use compared to stand in stand. However, if you look at the card, clinical endpoints, death or myocardial infarction, there's um, a trend with lower numbers uh, in the DCB group for uh, reduced events. The basic principle of DCB only is presented here. Um, lesion preparation is the most important part of the interventional procedure. And after um, having the result of your lesion preparation, uh, you have to decide if this lesion is suitable for DCB only or uh, if there's a need for a permanent stand. And we defined a so-called acceptable angiographic result, which means uh, no flow-limiting dissections. Type A and B dissections are fine because they are not flow-limiting. Um, a residual stenosis of less than 30%. And if you want to include functional measurements, uh, the recommendation is an FR rate of at least 0.8. Um, it has been shown in uh, clinical data that this recommendation of the acceptable angiographic result is very suitable to predict the uh, long-term outcome in terms of target lesion revascularization, as in this work from the uh, Colombo group from Milano. What about de novo disease, which is not yet uh, supported in the guidelines? We have several clinical scenarios for DCB, small vessels, acute coronary syndrome, patient with high bleeding risk, or uh, bifurcation. From the in this paper here, you can see an overview of the randomized trials on DCB only in de novo lesions and data supporting the use of DCB also in vessels uh, from at least three millimeter in diameter. Uh, the largest randomized trial so far is the basket small two trial, 758 patients randomized to either uh, DCB only or current generation drug looting stands in coronary arteries up to three millimeter in diameter. And as you can see, MACE overall was no difference um, up to three years uh, with the two concepts. What about record balloons and bifurcation lesions? We have uh, uh, different scenarios here. One uh, initially investigated was uh, DCB plus the metal stand in the main branch and DCB in the side branch. Um, it turned out that this is not a good idea. In general, the combination of DCB with a newly implanted stand, especially the metal stand, uh, leads to inferior results compared to a drug-eluting stand. Next scenario in bifurcations is 
using a truck loading stand in the main branch and treating the side branch with a, a BCB. Um, here we have registry and randomized status for this approach. This is the Biolux one trial uh, using an um, Everolumus elut extended main branch with a very good acceptable late bloom loss and uh, Pactotexel coated balloon in the side branch with a late bloom loss of 0.1 uh, and uh, very good clinical outcomes. The trial from Herod and colleagues was randomized, 50 patients in each group focusing on the treatment of the side branch either with conventional balloon angioplasty or with the uh, truck coated balloon. Um, and as you can see here, late loom loss uh, was highly significant reduced by the use of the truck coated balloon uh, compared to uh, balloon angioplasty alone. And similar outcomes have been uh, reported from the randomized PEPCA-BIF trial, truck coated balloon versus uh, POBA, 32 patients each. And here we also see a significant reduction of late loom loss, 0.08, with the sequence please versus 0.47 in the POBA group and binary stimulus rate 6 versus 26%. The next approach is a more puristic approach, leaving nothing behind. Main branch TCB and side branch TCB. Um, for this approach, there are, we, uh, we have some case series, 39 patients reported, then we have the uh, registry data um, published by the group at colleagues, 70 patients with DCB only in the bifurcation, 57 combination with stenting. And as you can see, if you look at the um, nine months MACE rate, these were very acceptable data, DCB only 6.1, DCB plus stenting 7.3% event rate. Here you can see now a clinical example. This was one of the early trifurcation cases we did. Um, as you can see, we use three DCBs in all three uh, branches of this right coronary artery. And this was the initial result. And after 13 months, uh, you see an increase in lumen in all side branches, uh, which is very common after DCB only treatment. And we call this uh, effect lumen, late lumen enlargement. And here you can see the MLD, distribu uh, MLD distribution of uh, a series of patients at four months follow up. And as you can see, there's a shift from the left to the right in MLD distribution, which is unique for uh, this DCB-only treatment. Um, this finding has been confirmed by other groups. Um, here, for example, IBUS VH uh, investigation. This increase in total lumen area from post-procedure to follow-up is uh, in line with an increase in total vessel area, which may be one of the main um, um, reasons why we see this lumen enlargement. And we have a last scenario for bifurcations, treatment of the main branch of DCB and no treatment at all of the side branch. Why is this an approach? Because we have also seen from IWAS data that if we do treat the main branch, you see an increase in main vessel lumen area at the origin of the side branch over time, which is always also an effect of this late lumen enlargement. So my conclusion is uh, for DCB coronary, so far, pachytaxel coated balloons are the standard of care. You should follow strictly the rules of DCB only, including lesion preparation as the most important procedural step. After lesion preparation, the decision is if you use a DCB only or a current generation pachyloting stand. One of the interesting effects of DCB only treatment is late lumen enlargement. You can expect no stand associated late events. And in bifurcations, we have different scenarios. Uh, the most frequent will be drug loading stand, main branch, sign branch, uh, drug coated balloon. If you have not that much experience in DCP only so far, uh, if you want to go a more puristic approach, it makes sense to try leaving nothing behind either with DCP in main and side branch or um, a very simple approach using DCP only in the main branch. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Bruno, amazing data, uh, very good evidence. So, uh, open to thoughts. We have a few minutes for discussion. Yes, I'm Sudhir here, Sudhir Rathor. Uh, let me open the discussion. Um, uh, Bruno, this was a great presentation and you have uh, done an intensive overview and meta-analysis of all the data. In, in your view, is there uh, any data involving true bifurcation, 111 Medina, left main or large side branch, showing any results with main vessel drug eluting stent and side branch DCB in a systematic fashion so far? 
that, that, that's that's the major limitation of, of the approach using BCD in bifurcation because we have not really good randomized data. We have, we have these smaller randomized trials I, I presented looking at the effect of DCB in the side branch versus proba. And and here you, you can see that there is a reduction of labelum loss and, and, and restenosis in the side branch. I, I think this this is well accepted and, and a feasible approach. But um, for the the more puristic approach I presented, trying to avoid stenting in, in both branches, especially for the one 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 lesions, we have only registered data so far from from experienced centers. Uh, that, that's the main limitation. Uh, with respect to left main, um, it's much more complicated uh, because uh, if we're talking about left main, we are also talking about um, uh, osteal lesions, auto ostical lesions. And my personal experience with audio ostical lesions is that they require stenting in each case. So um, I would would say that for the left main approach, if you want to use DCB, it will be in most cases a, a hybrid approach with ES uh, from the left main to the LED or the circumflex, and maybe using DCB then for the remaining uh, branch. Thank you. What's your opinion about the new generational serolimus drug coating balloon and Maybe for Bernardo, uh, uh, some data about the Eastman registry, about the same balloon. So far as the um, uh, the the problem is that we have almost no randomized data so far. Um, there's one uh, trial from Malaysia where uh, I was also uh, part of with 25 versus 25 patients in instant restenosis again bacteria coated balloon. Uh, we will present a TCT some more data. But uh, still, there is very limited experience with the serolimus coated balloons versus paclitaxel coated balloons, where we have meanwhile a lot of, of data available. And you have to be aware that um, with, uh, if you compare DCB based local tract delivery versus stent based local tract delivery, uh, for limus, uh, you need for a longer time higher tissue levels of the drug. Uh, because uh, Zeromus has only a re uh, reversible binding um, and uh, Pactetaxel has a permanent binding. And so, so it's much more complicated to have good effect of Um Therefore, it's very hard to predict at this time if Zeromus will have the same efficacy um, as we have seen with the Pactetaxel coated balloons. Well, my point uh, uh, is this one. Yeah, I agree with Bruno that uh, Sivolimus is, um, is a drug which is much less lipophilic, so its penetration into the vessel wall is uh, a little bit more complex. So this is why it took uh, up to 10 years before, after Paclitaxel before entering the market. Currently, we have three uh, drug coated balloons saluting Sivolimus, uh, which are marketed in Europe. Uh, and they're going to, to, to see, we are going to see if they are uh, at least as equal as Paclitaxel. My feeling is that Paclitaxel has a clear effect in terms also of lumen gain uh, and improvement in the lumen and Sirolimus has already to demonstrate this effect. Uh, from the biological point of view, uh, we don't expect such an effect. How, on the other hand, Cerolimus has a more anti-inflammatory effect than Paclitaxel. So uh, it, is, uh, it is very interesting to see the data that in the next, in the next uh, four to five years will come out. Uh, regarding our registry, yes, we have finished the enrollment uh, of 2,142 patients and we will analyze the primary endpoint uh, in November because we will have uh, completed the one year follow-up and so I hope that I will be more specific and to be able to give more information uh, in January or February. So the you question, uh, Florian, did, did you start the uh, direct comparison of between uh, second please and um, Cerolimus? I think that you have the study, Bernardo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we are running the transform one. Actually, we are not running. <laughs> I am chairman of that study, but it's a sponsored study, whereas Eastbourne, the register I was talking about, uh, is an investigator-driven study. Transform 1 has already uh, enrolled 50% uh, of the patients, the population. It is a mechanistic study and will enroll um, 114 patients uh, as a direct comparison between uh, sequent please and magic touch. 
we will see we will see the angiographic outcome after six months in this uh, with this device. We think that we will complete the enrollment uh, uh, between January and February. All right. I think we we can move forward to to the next presentation by Dr. Shin. Uh, DCB only in uh, left main uh, treatment, feasibility, safety, and efficacy. Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2000 annual meeting. The title of my presentation is Feasibility, Safety, and Efficacy of Drug Corridable Only Treatment in Left Main Coronary Stenosis. Left main disease with dimerous stenosis over than 50% requires revascularization to improve the prognosis. Among them, PCI is recommended as a class 2A up to a syntax score of 32. Drocorid balloon is basically working as a balloon mechanism, so we need to know the balloon effect. The Benestent 1 RCT compared balloon to bare stent, and there was no difference in hard end points such as death and myocardial infarction. Only repeat PCI was more in balloon group. It is due to restenosis, which can be resolved with local drug treatment like drug coated balloon. To resolve this problem of balloon bare stent and drug routine stent were developed but hard end point such as death and myocardial infarction were not improved. Then what about drug coated balloon? Can DCB improve outcomes in this era? We performed PCI in 42 consecutive patients with left main disease. In patients with adequate balloon angioplasty, 23 patients were treated with drug coated balloon and the remaining 19 patients were treated with DES. The mean age was 63 years old in DCB and 67 years old in DES, and the most of the patients were men. There were mainly unstable angina patients, and there were three acute myocardial infarction patients in the DES group. The syntax score was higher in the DES group, median value 27.5, and three vessel disease was also more common, uh, 68%. In both groups, most of the patients were bifurcation region. The mean DES diameter was 3.7 millimeter, which was larger than the drug-coated balloon 3.4 millimeter. And IBUS was almost used in drug eluting stand group. Uh, there was no beta stenting in DCB group. In the QCA of 23 uh, DCB treated patients, diameter stenosis at baseline was 72%. And post DCB was 30% residual diameter stenosis. In follow, uh, the follow up duration is around six months. Diameter stenosis was unchanged, 31%, and lay lumen loss was 0.1 millimeter. One patient had a binary stenosis. We successfully retreated it by drocorid balloon again. In drug eluting stand, one patient died from myocardial infarction. These patients had already had a left main myocardial infarction when he came to our hospital and died several hours after stand PCI. After one year follow-up, uh, there were two target region revascularization in drug coated balloon and two events in drug eluting stand, including one cardiac death and one cerebral hemorrhage. This is a 61 years old man. He had a very tight stenosis in the left main uh, bifurcation. After check by IBUS, polyangioplasty was performed uh, with the left main to proximal radii and treated with a drug coated balloon. Although some residual stenosis remains, the procedure was finished because the rumen was much bigger than uh, baseline. After six months, left main stenosis was not observed. This patient has been well for three years without any angina symptoms. This is a 57 years old man and has a left main CTO. After wiring, angioplasty was done with a small size 1.5 millimeter balloon first. After ballooning, floor appeared. I did sequential balloon angioplasty increasing balloon size. After that, the floor improved a lot. I also performed the recorded balloon uh, for 
middle already this tight region. I did several balloonplasty with optimal sized balloon from left main to RAD and from left main to LCX, followed by hydrocoated balloon treatment. This is a, a final result after hydrocoated balloon treatment. After six months, left main triplication region were much dilated and uh, it looks normal coronary so we successfully treated left main CTO triplication region with a drug coated balloon only treatment. The patient is currently doing well without any symptom for over one year. This is a target region revascularization case. A 45 year old man with a very tight stenosis of left main shaft and a decreased anti-grade flow. Uh, it's just a TME2 flow. After balloon angioplasty and drug coated balloon treatment, the lumen increased significantly and the flow was normalized. Timmy 3 flow, his angina was gone. However, the patient had a follow up loss after discharge and was voluntarily discontinuing all drugs, including antiplatelet drugs. After six months, chest pain developed and left main disease recurred. Because he had full drug compliance, we retreated the region with a drug coated balloon. This is a follow coronary angiogram. Follow coronary angiogram showed a good result without recurrence after eight months. Now he has no symptom. So, why do we have to work so hard for drug coated balloon? Short duration of dual antiplatelet therapy for patients of full drug compliance, especially in young men for high bleeding risk patients and drug coated balloon has no stent related event like a stent thrombosis. And you may have the opportunity of bypass surgery or biologic treatment in the future. Here is a take home message. The purpose of PCI is to reduce the deaths and myocardial infarction. Drug coated balloon treatment is increasing with a low rate of heart end point, deaths and myocardial infarction, and acceptable rate of clinical outcome in left main disease. And this treatment without stenting is uh, feasible and well-tolerated method for the novoreptal main region if the predilation result is good. However, uh, we need randomized and controlled trial and it's necessary to further evaluate the safety and efficacy of drug coated bone treatment in left main disease. Thank you for your attention. Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Shin. Uh, very provocative, I found it. Uh, so, left main PCI, no stents, no dapt. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, so, no dilemmas from now on. <laughs> All right, uh, Patrick. Dr. Sheen has also been in Rotterdam, so she learned. Do, uh, don't you think Sandozo would be excited with uh, this, this, this tool so 30 a, years I'm, ago? I'm a little bit worried about the people that we have trained. <laughs> but okay, they do things uh, pioneering. I mean, it, some of these results is fabulous. Yeah. I mean, it's really a first in man. It's a pilot. My question to uh, Dr. Sheen is the following. Uh, in the transform, which was mentioned by... Uh, by Bernardo and analyzed by Yoshi and the, and the core lab, we have an OCT after the pre-dilatation. And clearly not in the main stem, but in the peripheral vessel, in the distal uh, bed of the coronary artery, what we see as mechanism of balloon angioplasty, and we know that is the fracture of the intima with the deescence on yep. both sides, uh, fortunately, it doesn't come hematoma, and you have a direct contact of the blood and the lumen with the media and the adventitia. And if you see a loss of zero, okay, it's because there is some late lumen enlargement and, and positive remodeling. That's really the potential of the drug coating balloon. That's the dream that we had with the scaffold, is to be able that. The second point is that this lesion will be accessible for drug, for powerful drug that we will see in the next decade. You don't cage the vessel. But my question for Dr. Shin, what is the mechanism in the main stem? That's really what I'm puzzled. Do you believe that in the, in the main stem we got also that fractures of, uh, of intima with the essence of the intima detached from the media? 
I will be very surprised. And I don't think that with uh, IVIS you can have enough resolution to get this quality of image. You remember the first image that she present with anatomopathology? That was a clear fractures of the, uh, the intima. So Dr. Shin, after this long story. Uh, mechanism. Mechanism, mechanism of, uh, in, in the main the effect, stem, yeah. you know. But don't forget that Kaltenbach did uh, the first uh, main stem uh, number four patient in the history of uh, angioplasty, but he had these funny uh, pictures of the snow and the, the footprint uh, in the snow saying the water is leaving the lesion. I don't think that today we believe that. So what is the mechanism? Good question. Uh, thank you very much. I, I have also OCT data about the PCD. Uh, case and and uh, with the coronary angiogram, we couldn't find the uh, coronary artery dissection after PCD treatment. Uh, around the two third case uh, uh, did not show the uh, coronary dissection. However, uh, with the OCT, OCT, uh, OCT shows uh, all case of uh, PCD treatment. Uh, uh, have a uh, dissection. So we we should be make dissection to make a successful BCD treatment. So uh, I I just performed the aggressively uh, balloon angioplasty with optimal sized uh, balloon. There is an uh, there is a vessel to uh, balloon ratio is the one to one. So and um, I think the uh, make the dissection and uh, dilation the uh, lumen. Uh, there is a, a main mechanism of the uh, drug delivery to the best world. And uh, uh, even though there is very short duration of uh, contact the time uh, with the PC uh, balloon, and uh, it is enough to make the uh, prevent the land loss of the region. Okay, uh, thank you. Thierry? Thank you very much for sharing with us your experience with uh, DCB in left man. Just a question about the antiplatelet regimen that you have uh, used after this uh, procedure. GAPT, one month, six months, one year? Yes. One, I, uh, just aspirin? The uh, your antiparity therapy is, is uh, very. Uh, I just I feel very comfortable to use the uh, your antiparity therapy. All cases uh, I use the clopidogrel plus the aspirin, and uh, I just uh, prescribe the uh, the your antiparity and the duration is up to the clinical uh, state. So the patients is the acquired syndrome. I just want to. Uh, use the uh, six months uh, duration of joint the therapy. However, there is a stable angina. The uh, one month of joint fertility therapy is enough, even though there is a left main disease. Okay, so one month to six months. Yes. The, yes. But, uh, there is no any data. Yeah, I'm sure the, the, there's going to be lots of questions here, but a uh, couple more. So, Bernard. Yes. Do you have any way to um, specific way to follow up this patient? Do you plan to have a systematic angiographic follow up, or to rely on the clinical follow up as for any other uh, left main treated with DES? Uh, this case is just an uh, all for the uh, DCB registry study. So uh, usually I I uh, I don't want to uh, follow up. Uh, or angiogram or imaging data. Uh, just a clinical follow-up is enough to, uh, to, to make the successful PCB treatment. You, you have a unique opportunity to get some intracoronary imaging of this beautiful data and yes. uh, get some better inside of uh, the mechanisms um, yeah, yes. in, the, in the short initial. and long term. Don't lose this opportunity. Any other question? May I ask a brief question from Dr. Shen, uh, important concept. So your series of 40 patients, are they consecutive patients or are they selected patients? Uh, there the is a consecutive patient. 
So how many or former FMA diseases patients? So in your experience, uh, how often there is a flow limiting uh, residual stenosis after the balloon angioplasty? So do you decide after doing the adequate lesion preparation? And if the residual stenosis is acceptable and there is no flow limiting stenosis to apply drug coated balloon. So in your experience, what I'm trying to come to is if you look at consecutive left main stem with all kinds of pathologies, calcified, angulated, bifurcation, what percentage of left main PCI can be done with drug coated balloon, uh, which may not require drug eluting stent? Any, any uh, comment on yes. that? Yes, and after the angioplasty, uh, the result is uh, not good. That is uh, 19 patients in my data. So after the range of plus, the ratio of dimer is over 30% and pro dissection. So I used the, uh, the put the stand in 19 patients among the polyp patients. That is consecutive patients. And I just then uh, include the patients um, uh, during the two and a half years. Okay, I'm yes. sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just a brief comment. So, so do you uh, approach these patients in slightly different way in terms of uh, uh, lesion preparation? Because lesion preparation is very important, how aggressive you predilate the lesion, what devices you use to predilate, because that might have consequence on uh, a final residual stenosis or, or flow limiting dissection. Yes, and, and I just an uh, aggressively uh, predilation uh, technique and uh, with the uh, uh, scoring volume and, and repeatedly I just dilated the, the region uh, to make the uh, dissection. But uh, if the dissection is flow limiting, I just put the stand. And if not, I just then um, treat it with the DCB only. It's very simple. There is a, a, a provisional strategy. So much, thank you so much, Dr. Shin. I think uh, we're going to have some more discussions on this interesting topic offline. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, one moment. Let, uh, uh, you know what? In the interest of time, uh, let, let's move forward. Uh, and then well, we're going to have. It was because of the audience, they, they have questions. Uh, if, well, okay. Is, is that. Okay. Okay. V very short. Yeah, because there are three questions from the audience. I tried to summarize them. They, they ask about the lesion preparation of left main that is different and how do you assess the dissections after drug eluting balloon in left main? You use OCT, IBUS. And then uh, how is tolerated by the patient when you inflate a balloon in the left main for uh, 30 seconds, 45 seconds? There are these questions from the audience. Thank you. Uh, uh, but this uh, inflation duration is, uh, I just then uh, usually uh, persist up to 60 seconds. So, and before that, I repeatedly and uh, perform the uh, balloon angioplasty uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, ischemic conditioning uh, before the DCD application for 60 seconds. So, that is an we are used to, to apply the uh, six second of DCD treatment. And, uh, and I just usually um, uh, uh, confirm the uh, dissection is by coronary angiography. However, some uh, I feel some uh, uncomfortable angiograph uh, angiography finding and I just use the IBUS or OCT. Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much. So let's move to the to the next. Uh... Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is Stentless Procedure, Effective DCB Treatment. This is my disclosure slide. In current guideline for the treatment of bifurcation region, single center strategy is measure method. In United States also, European country also. Of course, Japan too. When I considered about current situation, I have some questions. As I showed, single stent strategy is reliable treatment method. Will I need stentless procedure in this day and age? 
What situation will need stentless procedure? What will be the reliable stentless procedure? Considering about the candidate for stentless procedure, some condition may apply like the following. As regarding patient background, we can say these things. In Japan, many doctors want to avoid to use stent for young patients, especially less than 50s. As regarding lesion morphology, I think these two situations are important. About the reliable stentless procedure, the ECB is paid attention recently. In the last EBC, there were some comments about it. This paper reported the effect of paclitaxel coated balloon for side of branch in true bifurcation region from China. In comparison with conventional balloon group, late lumen loss in DCB group was significantly smaller and incidence of mace was also significantly lower. From Japan, Dr. Kitani's group reported the efficacy of DCB after PRAP reduction. They evaluated outcomes of 129 DCA DCB cases without stent use. In this study, true bifurcation region was 14% and more than 70% of main target was in the main branch. TRR at 12 months was 3.1% and it was quite low. Clinical outcomes were pretty good totally. In this study, there are no differences in minimum lumen diameter and percent diameter stenosis between post DCA and follow up despite stentless procedure. This may mean that aggressive plaque reduction facilitates the effect of DCB. According to the data of 247 patients treated with DCB in my hospital, region preparation less than 58.5% in plaque area was important in stentless PCR using DCB. Let me show my case. This patient had a severe stenosis in proximal circumflex and mild stenosis in proximal LAD. To avoid the compromise of LAD, I performed directional atherectomy to the circumflex. After atherectomy, angio and IBAS image looked pretty good. And then I directed the proximal circumflex with cutting bone and DCB. Final angiogram showed good result. One year later, there were no resonances. Next case was 60s male with 111 left main disease. As I wanted to avoid complex stenting and carolina or plaque shift, I performed a me to both branches. After a me, I direct proximal left circumflex with cutting bone and the DCB, and then I put two synergy stents because main branch lesion was very diffuse. After putting stent pot and minimum keys was performed to fix this trifurcation. Final angiogram showed good result. Although dissection was recognized at proximal circumflex, I decided to observe it because the section was not malignant on IVAS image and the percent plaque area was 46%. This dissection healed completely and there was no resonance at follow-up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my conclusion. Although the cases which need a stentless strategy may be rare currently because of the development of DES, there will be some situations in which stentless seems to be beneficial for the patients. DCB may be a potential strategy for the treatment of bifurcation region when we aspire for a stent rest procedure. However, some kind of region preparation, such as plaque reduction, will be needed to make DCB more effective. Thank you for your attention. Um, you use uh, in both of your uh, cases uh, cutting balloon. Do you prefer it? Uh, preparation of the lesion with the cutting balloon regularly? Yes, thank you for your question. And uh, yeah, in my hospital, the always, um, in almost case, uh, we uh, use a cut, uh, cutting worm before the DCB, before usage of the DCB. So 
uh, in my data, as I shown, as I showed the in my presentation, the the data uh, in my hospital, the uh, percent for aquaria less than fifty eight point five percent is a uh, this value is a very big, this number is a very, very important for us. So we uh, we usually the try to the uh, try to the uh, try to reduce the plug volume there uh, before the DC, before usage with DCB at least less than the 60 percent of the plug area I uh, maybe I can say so I admire um, for you I admire you for your results fantastic work and um, just about the question you uh, which was asked with cutting balloon I also use basically on before every drug balloon, a cutting balloon in native lesions, and this works extremely well. In my data, the cutting balloon, the scoring effect of the cutting balloon is uh, very, very uh, effective uh, compared to uh, under any other uh, uh, scoring device like uh, so, uh, Laplace NLC or under uh, Scoffrex. So the so usually we uh, use uh, cutting boring for the pre, uh, preparation that uh, preparation before the DCB usage. Dr. Kinoshita. Yep. Uh, good presentation. Uh, you've shown that uh, you do a thyrectomy to the side branch uh, to mm -hmm. reduce the plug burden, and mm -hmm. then use drug coated balloon before putting the main vessel stent. Do you have any experience of uh, using drug coated balloon uh, to the side branch? After the main vessel stenting, yeah. Thank you for thank you for your question. Yeah, uh, usually when uh, uh, in a treatment of the bifurcation region, recently we often use a uh, uh, main branch stenting and uh, a side of branch or the side of branch uh, DCB dilatation. So at that time, uh, we always the uh, before the stenting in the main branch. Uh, I usually use a DCB in the side branch, and then uh, I put the stent in the main branch. This is our standard procedure. And followed by kissing in all cases, or depending on the result on the side branch. Uh, yeah. I, so uh, when I use uh, DCB for the side branch, it's it means the side branch is a very very uh, important branch. So. In my case, in our case, it's the almost case that we do the kissing balloon. Thank you. Okay, if there is no questions, I suggest to move forward uh, with the presentation of Dr. Uh, Yoon Yo, sorry, uh, with a um, presentation uh, comparison between drug loading stents implantation and drug coating balloon and geoplasty in patients with left main bifurcation in instant retinotic lesions, please. I am Hyung Jun Ju from Korea University Annam Hospital, and thank you for having me in EBC 2021. My topic is repeat PCI for left main bifurcation ISL lesion. I have nothing to disclose. Current guidelines recommend both cabbage and PCI for left main coronary artery disease depending on its anatomical consideration. PCI for left main coronary artery disease became feasible and safe as cabbage. Therefore, the proportion of PCI for left main coronary artery disease is significantly increasing. The problem is that the PCI for left main coronary artery disease is associated with higher risk for risk stenosis and repeat revascularization. In Syntex trial, five-year incidence for repeat revascularization after PCI for left main coronary artery disease was 26.7%. In pre-combat trial, ischemic-driven target vessel revascularization was 11.4%. Importantly, as you can see the Syntex trial, there are patients underwent repeat revascularization after left main coronary artery disease PCI. I feel that the sum left main instant restenosis cases might be included in this population, and repeat PCI was a more common revascularization strategy for this population than cabbage. Let me show one case. The case was a 47-year-old man. In 2007, 
PCI with Endeavor stand was performed at proximal cell complex artery. One year later, instant restonesis was developed. We implanted another stand from left circumflex osteum. Final angiography showed good angiographic result. However, two years later, chest pain was redeveloped and coronary angiography shows severe ISR at LAD osteum and left circumflex osteum. So, we implanted two stents with final kissing bone technique. Post-procedural -proc eye showed good stent opposition. Only one stent stroke at the proximal edge of left main stent was insufficiently opposed, but we think we thought this result was quite optimal. However, one year later, severe instant restonosis was redeveloped at the LAD osteum. So, we performed drug-coated angioplasty for that lesion. Final angiography showed good result. What we can learn from this case is that the lesions and the proce procedural involvement of left main bifurcation could be a significant predictor for instant restenosis. As you already know, the guideline recommend drug-coated balloon angioplasty and repeat drug routine stent implantation for instant restenosis lesion as class 1a. However, the clinical prognosis between drug-coated balloon angioplasty and repeat drug-routine stain implantation, especially for left main bifurcation ISL lesion, is largely uncertain. We compare the clinical outcome between drug-coated balloon angioplasty and repeat drug-routine stain implantation in patients with left main bifurcation ISL lesion. This is a single-center retrospective study and includes only 75 patients with left main bifurcation ISL lesion who underwent repeat PCI. Baseline characteristics show that drug lifting stand group tend to have higher incidence of acute myocardial infarction presentation at index PCI than drug-coated balloon group. Previous PCI characteristics show that 33% had non left main bifurcation lesion at the previous PCI. Drug-coated balloon group tend to have higher percentage of stand in stand cases and a little bit larger previous stand diameters compared to a drug routine stand group. True bifurcation rate was 27% in DES group and 29% in drug-coated balloon angioplasty group. At the time, before 2015, Intravascular image was performed only 25 at 35%. QCA data showed the post -pro procedural target lesion minimal lumen diameter was significantly smaller in drug coated balloon angioplasty group. I feel that the selection bias on drug coated balloon angioplasty favoring small vest di diameter and acute recoil after drug coated balloon angioplasty might contribute this result. However, follow-up ta uh, target lesion minimal lumen diameter showed only borderline significance. Difference of follow-up target lesion minimal lumen diameter was attenuated. Considering that the heterogeneous baseline clinical and angiographic characteristics between two groups, we performed the propensity score matching analysis to compare the clinical prognosis between two groups. MACE showed similar clinical outcome even after propensity score matching. Low rank P value in Kaplan Mayer curve was 0.64. Cox proportional hazard model for MACE suggests that the true bifurcation lesion was the only one important risk factor for MACE in patients who underwent repeat PCI for left main bifurcation ISL lesion. In summary, 33% of patients with left main bifurcation ISR lesion had non-left main bifurcation lesions at the previous PCI. It suggests that the initial PCI strategy for proximal segment of main branch is very important. Patient in drug-coated balloon angioplasty group has a trend of less acute myocardial infarction presentation at index PCI and more stand-in-stand -stand cases. And smaller Post PCI target lesion minimal lumen diameter was also noted in drug coated balloon angioplasty group. 
indeed suggests that the non-urgent clinical situation and lesion complexities might make the operator conservative and suppress aggressive procedure. Finally, it might result in clinical outcome of repeat PCI for these patients. However, the instance of MACE remains to be similar between two groups during the follow-up period. Multivariate Cox regression analysis demonstrated that the true bifurcation lesion is the only important independent risk predictor for MACE after procedure. So we have to consider cabbage in these cases. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. We have uh, only short time for discussion. Any questions? Uh, what do you think about the importance of imaging uh, to, to plan your procedure, uh, how to manage the restenosis? Your question is the option of intravascular imaging for ISL lesion? Yes. Uh, what will be the difference after the... Uh, what will make you the choice for? Uh, implanting the stand, the preparation of the lesion, uh, the, using the drug coating balloon, depending on the imaging of the mechanism of restenosis. Uh, uh, actually, uh, these cases are uh, actually uh, are not my cases. I, I just analyzed our institutional experience, and then the data shows that uh, as you can. Uh, imagine easily the urgent case, we usually uh, pr uh, physician prefer stenting. And the in, in case of stable angina patient, we usually uh, uh, carefully select uh, uh, the drug coated balloon angioplasty for uh, left main bifurcation ISL lesions. And then, so, uh, at, and then actually, I don't, I, I'm not sure that. Uh, intravascular imaging can be helpful to uh, choose that uh, uh, between the drug coated bolangioplasty and the stent. Uh, excuse me, um, Thierry, if I can uh, comment on this, uh, uh, I must say that I disagree. Hmm. Well, I find it mandatory to use intravascular imaging in any left main PCI, okay? But mostly in the case of instant restenosis, we need to assess and to understand the cause for instant restenosis. Uh, I am pretty much convinced that many, um, in many cases where uh, DCB fails to be to maintain a good uh, uh, angiographic and clinical follow-up after uh, after its use in instant restenosis, uh, it's because uh, the cause for instant restenosis has not been correctly assessed. So. For example, if we have the stent which is uh, uh, not uh, perfectly implanted and it's a little bit unexpanded, we need to be more aggressive than in any other case uh, in preparing the lesion. For example, using a non-compliant balloon, an opian balloon, or whatever we may have in our cat lab. So this is why there are many things that we don't understand with the sole angiography. And so we need to do uh, at least IVUS or possibly OCT, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the, I agree your opinion. Intravascular image is very important, but uh, uh, I, I'm not sure about the, what kind of intravascular image is good for uh, the procedure. I, I said that it depends on, on the experience of the operator. If you are experienced on IVUS, so please use IVUS and take all the information that you may achieve from, from it. In our cat lab, we use OCT for left main, for distal left main, and so we use OCT. Uh, talking about instant restenosis and, and left main in this case. But uh, uh, any any type of intravascular imaging you are going to use, uh, it is crucial before uh, before using DCB. Thank you, Bernardo. I think that it's time to move to the most important part of this session. Uh, let me introduce doc Dr. Chevalier and uh, randomized trial and left main and left main using drug coating balloon. Yes, in the next 15 minutes, we have to, to discuss what could be uh, an EBC trial for demonstrating the benefit of uh, DCB in uh, bifurcation lesions. Uh, there was a lot of exchange between uh, colleagues before this uh, session by emails, and we received some, uh, some design. I'm going to show you 
and I try to extract the main question we have to debate uh, today. Is it we receive uh, several. Uh, uh, so this is the type of uh, trial we receive. This one is coming from my co-chair, who is uh, on the right side of the, of the stage. And you can see here that we are dealing with very complex lesion. It's really a kind of definition uh, uh, criteria uh, on left main and non-left main. The first step is to predilate main branch and side branch and to check the result. If it's not satisfactory, you go to, to stenting. And if you have a successful side branch predilatation, you randomize between two stent strategy versus provisional DCB group. Uh, meaning that you inflate the DCB for 60 seconds, do a main branch uh, stenting, final pot, and uh, eventually uh, finish by uh, pot key spot at the left operator decision, and if necessary, side branch uh, stenting. Next one. Uh, I have to add on here. Okay. So this. Uh, uh, next one is coming from uh, Yves Louvar. It's again a complex lesion. You can see triple one Medina or zero one one. The distal segment, I guess, it's on the side branch, Yves, because it was not clear. Yes, it is. And uh, you can see that uh, it randomized between a DCB application with bail out stenting by tap versus T or TAP according to, I think, to the angulation, I suppose. Uh, so it's uh, another type of, uh, of design. Another uh, proposal which is coming from our, our um, another uh, chairman of this session, Sudiratore, and uh, it's, uh, it's here not only in left men, on, but also non-left men. There's no criteria regarding the severity of the stenosis but it should be triple one Medina or zero one one. And it's again a provisional uh, strategy uh, according to the EBC uh, philosophy using uh, DCB Cyrolimus versus uh, POBA in the side branch. And another type of trial proposed by Eve, which is more complex again, you can see according to lesion length is randomizing POBA versus DCB or DCB versus T on tap according to the lesion length on the side bones, more or less uh, 10 millimeters. And another type of uh, randomization proposed by Eve, here it's a little bit less complex because you can see that it's uh, less than 10 millimeters on the side bones and it's a randomization between DCB and POBA. And uh, the last one was coming from Dr. Sheen. Here we have really all comers bifurcation, no criteria regarding the severity of the side branch, the size of the side branch, or the length of the lesion of the side branch. And you have to randomize between DCV strategy and DES based strategy with a more long term follow up and other proposals as it was up to three years. So I try to summarize the point to be discussed now between us. And the, I think the first one is we plan to design this trial only to prove the benefit on, of DCB on side branch, or we have also to consider main branch, as it was shown by our colleagues from uh, Korea in, uh, in left main a few minutes ago. So we have seen uh, we have seen beautiful case of treatment of left main without uh, without any stent, but uh, uh, the population is modest. And uh, maybe it will be too ambitious to begin with uh, such a trial, in my opinion. So uh, I think for me, uh, the trial in left main or even left, left main plus other lesion we have to define will be probably uh, DS in the main vessel and uh, uh, DCB in the side branch. So that's my opinion. Any other comment about the potential interest to, in to introduce the main branch in the, in the trial? from the floor, from the connected people from internet? Just a brief comment. Well, I think what we have to look, uh, what we are trying to see is how we move forward. And if, if you see the current standard of care for bifurcation PCI, whether left main or non-left main at the moment is provisional strategy, followed by stenting to the side branch if uh, the, there's a reduced stable flow, 
of flow limited dissection. So I think if we move in a step by fashion, I think we have to first prove whether doing drug coated balloon through the side branch, big side branch in the main bifurcation is superior to the provisional strategy of drug coated uh, of non-compliant balloon in the side branch. Obviously, there will be some cases where second stent has to be implanted, which has to be driven by the study in terms of flow limiting uh, dissection. Obviously, if that is proved superior, the next step could be drug coated balloon alone. That is my uh, view. Thank you. Bruno Scheller, I think you have some comment about uh, main branch uh, DCB. Um, my, my question to the, to, to the, the panelists and the audience is, what, what will be the primary endpoint of such a trial? Do you want to show that you have reduced restenosis, less TLR, or do you want to look at, at clinical, hard clinical endpoints? Yes, it's part of the following questions. Can we go to the next point, if we can keep the other slide on the screen? Can we focus on left men or non-left men or, or both left men or non-left men? It's another topic. I think bef um, I agree with Bruno, we should decide what the endpoint should be, but I, I would aim for a big trial and I would aim for a strategy trial where we really um, leave it to the operator to decide whether he would treat everything with a drug looting balloon or whether he thinks it's better to treat the main branch with a stent on the side branch with a drug looting balloon. But I think let it be a big, powerful trial based on the strategy um, uh, we should define upfront drug routing balloon based or stent based. And then let's just also decide when the time point will be of the randomization, because I think it's useless to randomize upfront because then very often you will end up having a dissection and ending up with two stents. But I think once you prepare the lesion, then you should be able to, to decide, okay, can I treat this with just with balloons or just with stents? And I would include all the patients. Let this be a big clinical uh, endpoint power trial. Thank you. Yes, one comment from the floor. Yeah, I, I think if you have a stent in the main branch and you have a, a drug-coated balloon in the side branch, I, I think it should be against the two-stent technique. Or, I mean, otherwise it really doesn't make sense that you in one arm have a stent and a drug-coated balloon and in the other arm only one stent. No, I'm, I don't agree with you. So okay, I, fine. Because uh, we we have uh, we have done uh, many uh, trials showing that when the side branch lesion is short, uh, the regulating stent in the main vessel, crossing towards the most distal cell and pushing some. If we are uh, skilled and maybe uh, also uh, lucky, uh, you can push some metal uh, in the first millimeters of the side branch and right. can be. Uh, can be support several millimeters of the proximal vessel. So with a, a, a kissing balloon, you may treat true bifurcation lesions. Even in the left main, we did that frequently. You can ask my colleague uh, Thierry Lefebvre. So I think uh, the, the problem is how long we can treat without stent safely, with a drug eluting balloon, with a, with a, bear, uh, a boba. And this is a, a, a question we don't have a really an answer. Maybe we'll have a beginning of an answer in the next session, left main, with the data presented by uh, Adrian Banning. So, but we can treat very simple, uh, true bifurcation lesion with uh, DES and, and balloon. So I think we can keep this uh, uh, as an option. Um, can I just uh, make a brief comment? Uh, I, I would like uh, Simon, Simon Eccleshaw is with us uh, as one of the moderators and he's got a, a lot of experience uh, from Norwich University Hospital uh, in using drug-coated balloons uh, for a long time. So, Simon, could you just uh, give your uh, view about uh, what we are discussing? Sure, thank you, and thank you very much for the invitation. Um, my view is, I think, basically, the, there's two approaches here. One is, are you trying to tweak bifurcation angioplasty with stents, or are you trying to change the whole way that you're doing bifurcation angioplasty by not putting stents in at all. Um, of the studies that you're currently discussing, I think you need to separate them out into left main or non-left main bifurcations. I think if you're working in left mains and you want to do a big study, currently it can't be a DCB only study because I don't think there are enough people with the 
expertise and therefore comfort to be able to do that without um, having a very large crossover from the DCB arm into the stent arm. I think the much more appealing study is to go straight to a non-left main bifurcation study, which is randomised to DCB only or DES only. And I think that would be probably the sort of step change that you're looking for to um, move more to a stentless type of procedure. And that would certainly be what I would favour. Um, in our hands, we have, from our first 300 bifurcations that we treated only with DCBs, uh, and that's a very broad definition of any lesion that involved a two millimetre side branch. But within it, obviously, there was around, I think the whole group was 350, and the, the complex group was something over 100. Our uh, nationally adjudicated TLR rate of a year was 3%, which is exactly the same as, as, as presented earlier. Um, it makes life much more simple and straightforward. And the number of times you actually have to treat the side branch is less because you're not compromising it with a stent in the first place. Simon, um, you So uh, you remember the, the first trial of EBC, Nordic one, and BBC One. Uh, we were dealing with uh, non-left main bifurcations, and we were in true bifurcation lesion, and we were uh, 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 making a, a randomized trial between a single versus a double stunting. And there was no difference at uh, one, two, three, five years, and this was explained by, uh, by uh, Bontcon Kou that the, we were addressing branch, side branches, especially side branches that were not uh, clinically relevant. So we cannot uh, wait for a result with this. So uh, I think we, if, we, if we do something in non-left main, you have to select what he called the relevant side branches. Uh, this is, for example, when, you are three, when we have three diagonal branch, no one is relevant. So single diagonal will be probably good for, for, for the study. So, you know, if, uh, accept it maybe if you think that in uh, uh, the DCB will replace in such small bifurcation lesion with, uh, with uh, uh, success the, the second stent. And the last point is that in the two, these two trials, especially in Nordic one, even there is no difference at five years, at 10 years there is a higher mortality in double stenting. So you, you make the, the, the assertion that you will do better than the second stent in small bifurcation lesions. Uh, for me, I think uh, we will need a very big population and probably without answer. Yes, it was part of the answer to this question. So what is control group? So it's a two-stand strategy or provisional POBA. It's probably related also to the complexity of the lesion you select. Uh, we have uh, seen some trials where in mostly uh, based on POBA as a control group. Some are proposed on tap. Any thought about that? Or DK crush? Or open, or open to uh, operator experience, or left at operator discretion? Maybe some comments about uh, all the three questions. I think that we could uh, organize the strategy trial and to implement the potential uh, advantages of drug coating balloon inside branch. Uh, we have to continue to prove that uh, ABC concept of uh, provisional works for the complex lesions. Everything is known about the non-complex lesions. So we, we should choose the complex lesions, bifurcation in left main, of course, true, true left main, and significant side branch, I completely agree with uh, Eve, uh, on non-left non main lesions. Let's, main, uh, uh, let's say more than 10% of myocardial mass. And then try to, to make the simple procedure, putting the stent uh, in the main branch, and we can discuss whether to try to predilate side branch, put the, put the drug coating balloon, and then just 
stand in main branch and pot. Or do the kissing and go to the side branch with the drug coating balloon. I think that would be the, the main points. Yeah, but this me. is uh, completely opposite to the philosophy of EBC. So the recommendation is not to pre-dilate the side branch in order to decrease the need for stent in the side branch. So this is our strategy, except for Manuel. I have, I have but the maybe comment he moved, for this. He moved to a different approach. In ABC main, the, uh, uh, there was a discouraging of touching the uh, side branch. Before stenting yes. the men, yes? The, sh the side branch was uh, uh, for uh, five less than six millimeters long, and 49% uh, of patients were predilated the side branch. If we choose the side branch that is huge and long than 10 millimeters, it's nobody will uh, have complaints about predilating first. That's my opinion. This is when you use two stents. But the recommendation was if you use two stents, you can predilate the side branch. If you do provisional, you do not predilate the side branch. This was the recommendation. And the other recommendation was to do a pot and a final kiss. How do you and of course, it was not followed. And we know that uh, in the EBC men, there was only 15% of pot, uh, which was a big surprise because it was against the recommendation of, uh, of the EBC. But uh, I, I think we are uh, in an early phase about uh, drug eluting balloon. Uh, of course, there is fans of drug eluting balloon. They want to do everything with drug eluting balloon, but it is about 5% of physicians. The other 95% are a little bit reluctant, and they want to see good randomized data. So I think it will be very difficult to include this kind of patient, left man treated with drug eluting balloon, or left man with a, uh, one stent versus, uh, two stent versus one stent plus drug eluting balloon. So I think we should start with something which is acceptable to everybody, which is proving that a drug eluting balloon is better than a non-compliant balloon in bifurcation lesion for the side branch. Of course, a big side branch. So I think, that in my opinion, the ideal study to start is this kind of study. Nordic 3 study showed it after three years there was a benefit of um, final kissing in patients with Medina 111. That's correct? Everybody agree? Yeah, there, there was, yeah, it is. So this, this will be the proof for us, if we have really Medina 111 and we should perform kissing, should we do this one study arm with standard POBA versus um, drug coated balloon? This, this is question in every meeting. People are asking for this question. I think we no should stand. Uh, stand only if. Um, yeah, bail out. For the sake of time, we should uh, stop now. Yeah. We can prolong this uh, discussion forever, I think. And uh, uh, we'll have a lot of time during uh, dinner to continue on this topic. I thank you for your participation.